Greetings team, today I have for you my loadout of my electronics workbench slash studio. And the first thing you're going to want to get in any work studio is some sort of water system. This one, the Avalon has hot and cold water. The reason I like this model is because it has a switch in the back where you can turn the hot and cold off or if you don't need them. It stores the five gallon jug down there. And uh, also don't forget your paper towel roll. In addition to the water system, you are going to want something to deliver yourself some caffeine. I have uh, beans and a nice pour over system here so I can pre-grind my beans with this little uh, metal grinder here. You can set the coarsity of the grain however you like. A uh, coffee filter sits on top of there. You can then pour the grains over top along with your hot water. I use a kettle for this for the pour over coffee just because the hot water in the Avalon is it's not really enough for it. In addition to that, I've got some hot water based snacks and uh, chips in the back here. So if you keep yourself fed, you're more likely to stay in your studio. By the way, everything I'm going to show you here today will have an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. So check that out if anything in here is of interest to you. Now, moving on to the actual electronics workbench, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the most essential items first, and then in no particular order, I'm going to go into detail on a bunch of other items. So the very first thing you are gonna want is a multimeter of some sort. Now you don't have to go super expensive right out of the gate. This Fluke 117 came in a kit with the current clamp. Uh, you can skip the kit and just go straight for the probe if you like, unless you know you're gonna have a need for that. You can cheap out, uh, that's like a hundred some bucks. You can cheap out on that to begin with, but eventually you are gonna want to uh, graduate up. The other two items that I say are absolutely essential that are right here are is your glue gun, <laughs> believe it or not and a wire stripper, crimp, and cutter. Essentially, this tool can do everything else these other tools can do, just not as well. And finally, the other items that you're going to want uh, have to do with the assembly of your electronics, which is your fume extractor. That's an absolute necessity if you are going to have a solder station. Uh, the solder pencil I have here is one of the least expensive wellers, the reason I like Weller, of course, is because it is ESD safe and you're going to want a solder holder and uh, you're going to want to go ahead and get an extra wire brush system to uh, clean off your pencil. When you first start out, the, the base tip is usually good enough for most applications. You can actually buy the individual tips separately as you need them, however fine or coarse you need to go. If you get any good at soldering, you are definitely going to want to get yourself a hot air gun and uh, this specific model is great because when you turn her on it actually will only engage when you take it off its little pedestal and then when you pop it back on it uh, shoots the fan speed way up just to cool her down before shutting off. Another essential item that you need to get right away is the power supply. Uh, the one I have here can go up to 60 volts and can deliver five amps. Fairly inexpensive. I would go ahead and uh, just get one of those. And if you are gonna be powering things up on your bench and doing assembly, you are gonna want an ESD safe uh, mat with a ground strap that you can connect up to a uh, little hand strap, which my hand straps are right up here. In addition to the mat, Unfortunately, you are going to have to buy a separate component to plug into an adapter. And what this is, is just something that connects right up to just the ground lug of an outlet. If you don't have access to that or do you, you don't want to waste a plug, you can actually run uh, this wire to a very large metal surface. So for example, this metal piece would be fine as a giant ground plane, so you can feel free to tap and screw into that if you wanted. So that right there is gonna be the essentials. Sorry, the <laughs> last essential item you're gonna need is a bench, and if you are building this from scratch, I would recommend this bench that I have. It's a four foot, it can hold 2,000 pounds. Obviously, you're not gonna put 2,000 pounds on there, 
but it's nice to get something like that because it is built very sturdy. The wood's very nice, pre-varnished, all that. The reason I like this model that I'm gonna share with you is you can adjust the height. So based upon the chair that you have, you can adjust it to suit your needs. It does not come with any trays like I have here. These I installed by screwing into the underside so you can kind of customize your bench however you like. You'll notice my little L here. I was able to screw in a, another little pocket for some tools, which I'll show you those in a second, don't you worry. There are other ones that are deeper and um, there are other styles that you can use. Uh, for example, on a four foot bench, three of those will fit along there, or you could just put one of those in the middle and have a little uh, something else that you made yourself kind of come out and, and hold something. So lots of possibilities. That's why I recommend that bench. Okay, and inside the little drawer are my precision screwdriver kit, as well as my precision tweezer kit. I end up using all of these, so I do recommend the kit. For the screwdriver kit, the bits are great. However, the screwdriver that this came with was of low quality, so I actually bought another kit just for this metallic screwdriver, and I actually tossed the bits and just kept the screwdriver. The next thing I'd recommend getting is the oscilloscope. It's a decent hit, uh, but why you're gonna want that is you can kind of start actually diagnosing uh, issues you might have with your circuitry here. This one I have plugged in right now to the power supply just to show uh, the little ripple I get when I draw from it. This uh, power supply is actually steadier than I thought it was. I thought I'd see a lot worse ripple there. Uh, it's right at the 12 volt mark and we're at a volt per division. So that is a pretty steady output there. So in addition to getting the oscilloscope, which this oscilloscope comes with, the uh, uh, probes, pretty good quality probes, you're gonna wanna go ahead and buy a little kit that comes with um, little connectors that you can use to go straight to your power supply. As you can see here, I have these wired in directly in. You can get ones that are alligator clips or those little banana uh, snap clips as well. I just bought some new ones and I've been taking them, taking them out as needed, so that's why only one is out so far. Once you have that, you're gonna probably start needing some storage. You can't go too big with these. Whatever space you have, go ahead and get it. After you have that, you're gonna start getting fairly comfy uh, and you're gonna set up your bench. Some extra light never hurt. That is actually hooked up directly to the power switch, so if I wanted to, I could just Turn the switch on and off like that. You are gonna wanna pair your bench with a power strip. And I have right here a nice uh, USB-C and A uh, power adapter for various USB-C projects. The cable I have here, which I will link, has a output to show you how much power you're pulling off of there. Uh, comes in handy for a little quick diagnostics. For your solder station, once you've mastered just the general pencil work, you're gonna find yourself needing a decent quality <coughs> solder sucker. This one is made in Japan and is all aluminum and is very high quality. This is the best one I've ever owned, just recently got it. Here, why don't we listen to this suction? <coughs> Beautiful. Uh, in addition to that, you are gonna wanna grab yourself some wire wick for soldering, and I had alluded to it, but you are gonna want uh, to get yourself some flux, which if you don't know what this stuff does, it makes the solder flow to the location you actually intend it to flow. So definitely grab, pick yourself up some of that. Unfortunately, those items are gonna be a DigiKey, so I'll give you the DigiKey part numbers for that. Most things you can actually just have on your bench and solder in place, but for other things that you wanna have holding up, some helping hands never hurt anybody, and a circuit board holder is a great thing to have get the right size uh, for your needs. Of the other items that are on here, the next thing I would buy is a pair of diagonal cutters. The reason for that is for clipping all those underbelly leads. Then you're gonna wanna get a very fine pitched pair of needle nose pliers. 
and that's for bending leads primarily. And then to handle hot boards or other larger components, get yourself a bulkier uh, needle nose. And then that you can probably skip if you're decent with using a diagonal pliers for uh, trimming wires, but what this does is you can actually set the gauge. It holds that diameter nicely. And then you're gonna have to pick up crimps for the item, things that you crimp the most of. So don't, I actually won't link this. You'll just, you'll find those on your own. They're various kits. I will link a generic crimping kit though. That's just good to have. Auto strippers, these are great. Once you start doing things a lot and you wanna actually set a uh, different depth for your, for your wire stripping, these are absolutely great. Fairly expensive, so you'll grab those when you are good and ready to. In the spirit of PCB assembly, a hot plate is a very good thing to have since it allows you to stencil out, heat up all of your components all at once. If you do go with the ESD style mat, instead of just a generic plastic mat, uh, you are gonna want to buy ESD surface cleaner. The final item on the electronic workbench is the magnifying glass. This is a nicer one. You have to look at your parts through this here, unfortunately. Manually, and the reason I liked that more so than one of the ones that uh, just had a screen on it is it forces me to be right over my part. I am typically looking through this while soldering uh, some very fine components. So this forces me to be over it. You can get smaller, less expensive versions. I will link the more expensive equipment that I have shown here. And then I'll also give you a less expensive digital displayed version that's worth having as if you're going to be uh, working on fairly fine spaced components such as I have there. No electronics engineering work area would be complete without a 3D printer. Not only can you print little organizers for yourself as well as little decorations, but my main use for it is board housings uh, for my various projects. Uh, if you're going to be doing, if you're going to house more material than just running through one, one reel at a time, definitely recommend getting a uh, humidity chamber. Uh, this thing just heats the bottom, will keep the humidity moisture level low. Another item that is severely overlooked for an electronics studio is a place to study. Again, there's that nice four foot bench I have here. The opposite orientation of my drawers that I had on the other bench. You'll also want uh, one of these bad boys. This is a glass based dry erase board and the reason I recommend a glass based one is because you can clean it an infinite number of times. Fake plastic ones, they scratch and gouge and eventually can never be cleaned again. Definitely recommend getting a nice glass. This specific model has a nice metal backing, so if you have strong enough magnets, you can actually uh, connect up magnetic accessories. Your computer is obviously essential, and if you are gonna be doing PCBA work, I do recommend a space mouse. The space mouse makes working with the circuit board so much nicer. You can, it, it feels like you're holding the part in your hand for the most part. All right, and then I do have kind of peeking back there is a little first aid kit, which I do absolutely recommend you keep nearby yourself. That's what I have for my bent, for my workbench. I also have a little tool chest, which uh, this actually ends up being just my more or less coffee station. <laughs> but you just keep various tools and uh, electrical engineering, dev boards and all that can hang out here as well. All right, so there you have it, folks. That is my workstation. It gets me and my projects done in style. So hope you enjoyed that tour. Until next time, I'm the ill-informed human. Goodbye.